Hey guys and gals and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoy it or learn something, feel free to like the video and to subscribe for daily Blender, Unity 3D, coding, Photoshop, and all sorts of other videos. Lastly, don't forget our motto, create your way. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create a RAM that extends in and out. It can be a hydraulic RAM, a pneumatic RAM, a magnetic RAM, anything that needs to stretch in and out of its housing. So let me show you how to do that. I use this extensively on our hydraulic excavator model that I've been making a tutorial on. And if you haven't been following it or you missed the part where we did the RAMs, I'm going to quickly show you how that was done so that you can use them in your own model. So we have... Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five different RAMs here. I think the RAM that best illustrates it is this one right here. So yeah, what we the effect that we're looking for with this RAM that we're going to be using is so that when we rotate it, it pushes that piston in and out. And you can see it working on the other ones as well. And you saw it in the intro. It, uh, it stretches all the RAMs. So that's the effect we're looking for. I'm going to show you how I did this. Um, it is on two bone layers, just like the whoop, wrong one, just like this. Let me turn on X-ray so we can see a little better in octahedron. So it's a little bit of a mess. That's why we set it up in just one layer. So these are the only bones you will need in the end to control this many pistons. You only need one bone to control your entire piston. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to be using vertex groups, but I'm going to show you a quick way to do it. And we're going to show you how to do this fresh. So what we need to do is, first of all, we need to center. I'm going to go into wireframe. We need to center our cursor at the tip of the RAM, or at the base of the RAM, I guess. Um, not the piston end, but the, the cylinder housing end. And make sure it's also centered uh, in this direction, too. So it's centered right directly where it should be. So you can see our 3D cursor is right in the center there. So now I'm going to create a new armature. So I'm just going to go armature, single bone, and I'm going to go into edit mode. And I'm going to take the, the head and I'm going to grab it. I'm going to move it all the way down to the center of the, the, entire, the entire RAM. As long as you stay in orthographic mode in one view, you don't have to worry about it rolling at all. It will stay it'll stay straight. So we're going to go into the bone tab and we're just going to call this RAM RAM01 or just RAM since we only have one. But if you had multiple, you'd want a nice naming nomenclature, but that's for uh, an armature tutorial. Anyways, from there we're going to take the uh, the base down here, the tail, and we're going to extrude a tiny bone. It doesn't matter where it is, it can be anywhere, but usually you want it at about a 90 degree angle just for ease of seeing you could even grab it out to there so you can see it outside of your mesh but it doesn't matter because it's going to be hidden later anyway and this is going to be ram zero or ram dot base and we're going to go to the tip and we're going to extrude another one and this is going to be ram dot tip now two important things first of all these need to be parented to ram so I'm going to parent this one to RAM, but we don't want them connected. We don't want them to inherit scale. I'll show you why in a second. So this one not connected and not inherited scale. That way, so that when we, uh, so that when this bone stretches in pose mode, control tab, by the way, when this bone stretches, basically those bones stay the same size. And that's very important so that uh, this this function will work because we're not going to be assigning anything to this actual bone. We're actually going to be signing parts of the mesh to these two bones. We need one more bone now. What we need is a control bone. So what the control bone would be is it would be from your pivot point to the tip of your bone. So in this case with this um, blueprint, it would be from right here to the tip of the bone. So that's what I'm going to do. But to make it more extreme, I'm going to pretend that this uh, that this blueprint was all the way back, like this knuckle was all the way back. So I'm going to start it from right here. So I'm going to set my cursor there. I'm going to go into edit mode and shift A to add a new bone that's unconnected. Little tip for you. And I want the I want the head of the bone, so the tip, pointed at the head of our round bone, so again the tip. So I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to center it roughly in the tip there. Again, the, the better, the closer the better, but I'm going for speed. So this one is going to be ram.control or whatever your nomenclature is. And this one, uh, in this case, it's not going to be parented to anything, but if you had uh, if you had another armature that worked with the rest of the mesh, it might be parented to 
like if I had a knuckle here that had a bone operating it, I would parent this to that knuckle bone and I would parent the ram bone to that knuckle bone. But anyways, let's get started. So now that we have all our bones built, as you can see here, just ignore the rest that I had over there. First you select your mesh, then you select your armature, then you go control P. Now usually you would use an automatic weight armature to form. In this case, we're gonna use empty groups. This, this creates vertex groups for every single bone in our armature, and it's gonna make our job much easier because a mechanical model like this, it doesn't deform the same way a character would. You don't want any deformation because while well, steel doesn't the form like that usually <laughs> so we're gonna use empty groups I'm gonna show you how to use them so armature to form empty groups mesh first then the armature control P let me uh, turn on screencast keys first too I'm not first late so yeah control P mesh armature control P and then empty groups so now if you go into your mesh and go to this tab the data tab you'll see we now have a vertex group for every single part of the ram the ram the base the ram base the ram tip and the ram control we're not gonna like i said we're not gonna assign anything to the ram or the ram control only the tip and base we're gonna select our mess mesh we're gonna go into edit mode and i'm gonna hide this knuckle just because it's in the way and go to wireframe so we can see a little better so now you want to take let's do the let's do the tip first because that is the harder one so we're in edit mode and we need to assign vertexes to the tip bone so the tip bone what it controls is it controls the tip of your ram it controls the entire cylinder but it doesn't control anything else so it stops right here all any vertices from here back it doesn't control so basically if I brush selected these vertices right here it doesn't control it only controls these vertices right here so that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna select all those vertices oh, I've got extra geometry in there I don't need that's getting in the way so I've just hidden a bit of my mesh so this is easier so yeah the tip bone is gonna control all of these vertices so it basically the the tip where the pin goes through and the very first loop of your cylinder right there but nothing further just that you can see that we're not using the rest of the cylinder so all we need to do now is choose the tip and hit assign and to make sure you got the right vertices just hit deselect and select and make sure you haven't got any extra vertices so we're good there next we're going to do the base so select the base double tap a just to make sure nothing's selected and now for the base it's a little bit harder the base controls everything else so a quick way to do this if you have a perfect model is actually to uh, choose the tip and hit select and then go select inverse that'll select everything else and then we're gonna go to base and hit assign so yeah what the what the base controls is the entire cylinder housing and the bottom loop of the cylinder so that's assigned deselect select deselect select so as long as my model was perfect enough then this should work perfectly so now all we need to do is test it along the X oh sorry we need to set up our constraint what am I thinking so um, go back into your armature I'm gonna go into wireframe again and the bone we created for the for the RAM the RAM bone um, go into pose mode first so that you get the bone constraints tab and then add a stretch to constraint and we want to stretch to our armature since it's our only one and the bone we want is the RAM control so you'll see it made a giant change to fix that you want to go take the head and tail slider go all the way up and that'll show you how far it can stretch and down below is how little it can stretch but anyway set it to its max and then hit reset and go right back to where it was so basically what this bone constraint is telling us telling blender is saying take ram control and have this bone stretch to wherever it is so if if ram control this bone right here if this rotates down here have this bone stretch to it don't have it move but have it stretch to it so let me show you how that works now if we rotate the control bone you'll see how it follows it and our mesh does too because we already assigned it 
So that is basically all there is to it. Ignore the rest of my mesh since it's, I guess, already assigned and everything. But yeah, that's exactly how it works. Let me go into solid mode and uh, show you that too. So you can see the RAM going in, or the, yeah, the RAM going in of the cylinder and the RAM coming out. And it'll go out to infinity, no matter how big or small you make it. So that's a little unrealistic, but you, you get the idea. It doesn't matter uh, how big you make the cylinder in, or the RAM inside the cylinder, it'll still stretch. That's because we're using a stretch to constraint. Now the problem with that is it's stretching, it's not sliding. Now you can do sliding, that would be a different constraint, something like a track to or a copy location or a follow path, something like that. And that's for another tutorial. Now, um, stretch to is great for RAMs like this because usually the actual piston part would be perfect chrome. So as long as you're using a cycles or internal blender materials, it'll be fine because it's just gonna stretch those materials and there'll be no artifacting or deformation but if you assigned a texture to any part of your RAM for some reason it's going to stretch that texture so if for some reason I don't know you wanted to add something to the RAM for some reason although in real life they're always extremely bright and shiny chrome um, that would stretch so that's something that you cannot do with this method now into bone layers so that we can make this rig a little bit simpler. The only bone, like I said, we need is the control bone. So we can take, I'm going to go into wireframe again. We can take the tip, the RAM, and the base bone, or sorry, the base, the RAM, and the tip bone. And we can hit M to move to bone layer. And we can just move it to a separate bone layer. Now, all we have is this one bone on this layer. So when we, whenever we select our armature, it only has that bone selected and it still, it still controls our mesh and it still works exactly the same. So that's really all there is to it. So if you had a knuckle like I did that, or sorry, a boom that has three knuckles like this, like I, uh, like I said, I don't know if I added it out or not, but I only had one, two, three and then a fourth for the buck i only had four bones to control all of this all the pistons and everything plus i had one that controlled the whole boom at once so i had six bones compared to the usual compared to the usual 20 so i had 20 bones but i only needed six to control everything and realistically i only needed five to control um 15. so yeah that's really all there is to it I hope that made sense to you. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And that's, yeah, that, that's all there is to it. I just wanted to quickly show that to you. So anyways, thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Again, that's BlenderTek.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it. And don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, and programming videos. We are now on Twitter at twitter.com slash blender underscore tech. That's blender at blender underscore tech and Facebook at facebook.com slash blender tech page. All one word, blender tech page. We also now offer hard copies of our videos. So if you'd like a copy to download on your computer, watch later, just let us know, we'll upload it to our server. If you dislike this video for some reason, don't just leave and hit the dislike button. Instead, leave a comment about what you did not like or email the team at info at blender tech.com and we will continually improve our videos based on your community input. We also take requests for tutorials to let us know what you want or want to see more of. See you next time and remember, create your way. By the way, updates, we are very very soon going to be adding some free model and texture packs to blendertech.com slash blog as well as um, some code snippets, some pre-made code, some uh, pre-made Unity games and things like that. So expect some updates in the future and we're going to be doing some podcasts as soon as people start posting some questions. That's it for now, create your way.